Python. Okay, All right. So Python. So generally, uh, in outside market, we have a number of programming languages available. So uh, by using these programming lang languages, uh, we can develop the web applications. Generally, by, uh, programming languages are mainly used to develop the web applications or websites or uh, some other things. Okay, by using these programming languages, we are going to develop the applications. In market, we have .NET, Java, Ruby, Rails, Python, right? Same like we have Python is also there in uh, in market. So while compared to the other languages, Python is uh, uh, easy. And uh, if you go, for example, if you take any example, if you're trying to read the file, or else if you're you are writing some business logic for one use case, right? If you are using .NET or Java or Ruby Rails, so we need to write a uh, uh, huge line of huge lines of code for each and everything, right? While comparing the Python, so for example, there is a use case when I write the code into the Java by using Java. If I write the fifty lines of code into the Java, that use case in Python, just I can uh, either ten to fifteen lines. Uh, we can achieve the same thing in Python. Python. So the Python syntax is human readable. Python, whatever the, we are writing the code, right? That is a human readable language while well, compared to the other programming language. So here we have a number of advantages available in Python. So Python, by using the Python, we completely develop the web applications. Python also going to fulfill the uh, different, different uh, technology wise. Even though Python, we are going to use in the website. Python, we can use into the data engineering side. So we can use the Python into data science team, machine learning team, right? So uh, wherever uh, if we can use this python we, we can use in anywhere in python well compared to the normal programming languages python is going to fulfill the most of the business use cases okay right so uh, as per our as azure data in this we need to know about some python uh, stuff and all okay so uh, right first one is the so let me discuss the what what things we are going to in, discuss inside the python Python introduction, Python indentation is very, very important indentation. Next variables, data types. So we have here we have, uh, if, if, you, if you go for any programming languages, so these are all groups, concepts, variables, data types, okay, functions, exception handling, objects creations, right? Uh, full control flow statements, right? Operators, expressions, all are same. All are same. If you, if you if you choose any programming language, either Java or .NET or Python or Ruby Rails, every programming language is supporting supports the groups concepts. It has some data types, right? Variables, okay. Exception handling, classes, objects, okay. Control flow statements means if fairly fails loop something, right? So all all are common for any programming language. Here also Python. So we'll see the Python. Indentation. Indentation is very, very important while, while while writing the Python code. Indentation is very, very important. Means so tab spaces we need to maintain a proper order. Okay. If you uh, you can write in .NET or Java, you can write the code in uh, either uh, you can give the spaces or extra lines. It does not matter if you execute the code. If you click on F5 button, we can able to debug the code. But uh, when we are writing the Python code, may, make sure we need to maintain the indentation. Indentation. We'll see what is the indentation, right? Next, variables, variables and data types. So variable means generally whatever we are, uh, uh, we need to assign some information into variable, right? Means variable is going to hold in some data or a value. And data types, every programming languages or a database, data types are normal, right? Strings, here we have strings, number list, tuples, set, dictionaries. Here, mainly data types uh, here, uh, list, tuples, set, dictionaries. These are all the main things. So mainly we are going to talk about these are all those things. Very, very important guys, data types. List, tuple, set, dictionaries. Very, very important, important questions or interview question as well. Okay. Next, casting. How we are going to convert one data type to another data type. That is called casting. Next, here we have operators and expression. We'll see. Okay. We have arithmetic operation, logical operators. Every day, a programming language having the same concepts. Next, control flow statements. If, elif, and else loop. Okay, either if you if you select any C or CPP, .NET, Java, right? Control flow statements is common. Okay, here we have one extra one is elif, else if. So we can simply we can call it as elif. Next we have the functions and modules. Very very important functions and modules. 
right so see so i have as per uh, um, our project business use case i am going to write uh, function function q function means every function in python it starts with def def means it is a function so, right so if, if you see any python code it starts with def right means it is a function it is a function okay def means it is a function so we need to write the functions in uh, as azure uh, in azure databricks into in every project so once if you open any notebooks uh, we have the reusable uh, notebooks in the uh, we have available in the multiple uh, folders under azure databricks we have the workspace option so we are going to create the folders that folders having the n number of uh, files so if you open a few of the notebooks right so we can able to see the n number of functions see here i am going to maintain common functions this common functions right i am going to write this code into one notebook this notebook having the project related functions into one notebook i am going to maintain all the project related functions into one notebook okay i will tell you that reason so what is the purpose of to maintain all those things into one place so def means it is a function function okay functions are very very important next to modules see uh, here we are trying to import the modules see when we are handling when you, here i am going to write one python function here i am importing the date time okay and uh, here also um, so all the sql type related things here i am going to import it and the delta table also here i am going to import it all modules whatever the things we need click point i am going to import it import it next we have classes objects inheritance polymorphism and scope and modules these are all things which is comes under com from the oops concepts guys o o p s oops object to oriented programming language every programming language follow following the oops concepts object to pro uh, programming languages right so object to programming languages means so here we have classes objects inheritance polymorphism and um, in inheritance also we have the single inheritance multiple inheritance multi level inheritance like the way we have polymorphism so all those things which is comes under the oops concepts next exception handling very very important a very very important exception handling means while writing the code definitely we used to uh, handle the errors right definitely we used to handle the errors if not we need to uh here we are going to specify some keywords try catch accept exception so those keywords are which is come part of the exception handling while writing the code so sometimes not sometimes every times so we are going to capture this exception so uh, if there is no exception right we are going to maintain the main code into the try part if we are expecting any uh, error from the source side or some place so we are going to capture that uh, catch that exception right so for this reason we need to handle the exception only while handling the exception only we have the keywords try catch exception okay we'll see uh, direct uh, uh, project part we implement this exception these are all those things whatever we are discussing right we'll implement all those things into directly into project okay next python introduction so python is a pro popular programming language everyone know python can be used in a server or to create a web applications even though by using the python we can able to connect the uh, your database servers as well okay by using the python we can develop the web applications web applications are website both are same guys if you open any amazon web application or if you open any net banking either hdfc icic open into google chrome or browser those are which is comes under the web applications next python can connect to database system yes we can able to connect it it can also read and modify the files yes even though if you have a data which is available in the database by using the python we can read the data and we can modify the files as well python can be used to handle the big data and perform complex mathematics this is the this is the thing which we need to implement into our project okay python in as azure data in here you must and should uh, Uh, we need to learn the python and we need to write the python related code especially for handling the big data big data okay big data means here we have the uh, huge amount of data either gbs of data right terabytes of data something or else real time streaming data okay so that data we are going at the time of handling that data we need a python here as per our project 
we have the data, right? See, we have the data. Let me open any one of the Excel file. Let me scroll down. See, I have used data. Okay, I have a used data. So this data we are going to handle, right? This data we are going to handle, okay? If you are trying to handle the huge amount of data, large volume of data, so Python is going to uh, fulfill our needs. Okay, right. Python works on different platforms, means Windows, Mac, Linux. So right now we are using a Windows only. Uh, Linux part, Mac part also, Python is supported. Okay, right. Python has a simple syntax like English language. Next, Python has syntax that allows developers to write the program with the fewer lines than some other program Yes. So while compacting the other programming languages, so Python is going to uh, fulfill the developer related all those things. Means developer work is very easy while comparing to other programming language. Developer work is very easy. Means he's going to write the few lines of code only for any if you take any business logic. So right, developers are going developers are going to write the few lines of code only. So if it is a few lines, the way of reading, right? The way of uh, looking everything maybe looks good, right? Okay. Right, Python is mainly uh, uh, more advantageous for especially for developers point of view. Okay, All right. Next, indentation is very, very important guys. Indentation, see, I have just added screenshot into the right side. See, A equal to 100, so B equal to 100, if B greater than A, colon. See, next line, next line print starts with uh, uh, above B, right? See, in this space, which is, we can call it as indentation means we are going to maintain this uh, space in after the line after the line means if a space b greater than a here i just leave the colon okay the next uh, sorry next line here i'm going to write the next statement okay for example if i'm not maintaining this space right if i if i am trying to run my code right it will throw some error so it's it's saying that hey, please try to maintain the indentation there is an indentation issue okay in outside market, uh, we have the indentations tools available. For example, if, we, if you write the code, but when you're trying to uh, run this code, right, we'll throw the indentation related issue. Just copy your code and paste your uh, code into any uh, Google, uh, which is provided by some tools or your project also having some tools or else Visual Studio, this is one of the tool. It's going to help to, to resolve our indentation issues. See here, uh, the way of code looks like, see, this is the first line in the second line, right? Both lines are, see, here I don't have any colon or comma something in the first line. Okay, fine. If, it, if nothing is uh, there after first line, any end, right? Next second line starts with in first place only. This second line end with some colon or comma something, right? So after third line, it starts with uh, this place. Meaning, see, colon, if I click on enter, see, the mouse it starts with uh, this place itself only because here right now we are in python dot py the file name always we need to specify as dot py file name dot py py means python or if you are using any dot net file name dot cs java file name dot js so this is a symbol of python like the way we need to write the code for example if i specify uh, any line of code here something okay so while running while running the code, okay, it will throw the error. Means make sure while writing the Python code, we need to maintain the indentation is very, very important. Indentation is very, very important. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Variables. Variables. Already Python part we already seen, right? Variables means. Uh, variable means it is a it is going to store some value or it's going to store some data right python has no command for declaring a variable in python we don't have any keywords or any commands right so we are not going to where uh, how we are going to identify it is a variable something here see x equal to five means five is a value we are going to store that five into x variable x is a variable x five is an integer data type right next y equal to john john means it is a string john is a string so make sure while giving the names and all if it is a string we need to specify the double quotes john is a string 
we are going to store the john into a y variable. Y is a variable. In left side, we have a variable. Right side, variable having the value. That value we are going to hold into variable. Here, I am going to print the two variables. Print x. I am going to print the integer. Print y. I am going to print the string. Python has no command for declaring a variable. A variable is created the moment, the moment you first assign a value to it. See, we can assign this one uh, integer or one string into one variable. Or else we can assign like this way as well. X comma Y comma Y comma Z equal to RH comma banana comma cherry. Means here we are going to store three variables, th uh, three values into three variables. Here I am printing the X, Y, Z. Like the way you can write it. Either this way or this way. Okay, so print means we are going to print the statement. Right? Okay, variable names. While handling the variables, so uh, we need to uh, think, uh, we need to follow some, some rules and regulations. See, we'll, we'll see, the, we'll see the, um, while handling the variables, we need to follow some rules and regulations. A variable can have a short name like X, Y, or more descriptive name or age, car name, total value. Rules for Python variable. A variable name must starts with a letter or the underscore character. A variable name must starts with the letter or the, or the underscore character. Variable name cannot starts with a number. Make sure variable name cannot starts with a number. Okay, fine. See, as per this above example, so we just give the x equal to 5. So x is a variable, right? It is not a uh, number. X is not a number. Phi is a integer or phi is a number. We are going to store the phi with x. Left side, variable. Right side, variable holding the value. Okay, right. Variable can variable name cannot start with a number. A variable name can only contain alphanumeric characters and underscores. Means a to z, 0 to 9 and underscore. Okay, right. Variable names are case sensitive. Age, you see, AG, age, small letters, AG, capital letter, and AG are three different variables. Like the way you can able to write it. Either you can write in small letters, or else you can write in capital letters, or else you can write in one capital, the remaining one small. Variable names are case sensitive. Next, a variable name cannot be any, any of Python keywords. Make sure. We every programming language have some keywords. In Python also, we have some keywords. Exception handling, while handling the exception handling, we have try, accept, exception, like that, we have keywords. When we are handling with the functions, we have def is a keyword. When we are writing the lambda functions, something lambda keyword, something we are using, right? Same thing, whatever these keywords are, which is the present in the way, Python, we are not going to declare these keywords as a variable okay like a def def equal to file we are not going to specify the keywords into variables part okay right next variables fine okay while writing the variables we are must and should we are going to follow the some rules and regulations okay fine i will share this oh, i think i already uploaded this document or else i will upload it next global keyword Global keyword. Okay, global. Let's let's see what is the purpose of the global keyword. Normally, when you create a variable inside a function, right? So we, we already discussed right. Every function it starts with the def keyword. Def means it, which is belongs to function. Here in right side I have a function def space my function. Function def space my function. Function name your wish. Function name, you were wish. After function name, I just specify the brackets. Brackets. Okay. Def is a keyword. So while uh, declaring the function, first we are going to specify the def keyword. Def means which is, which is related to function. Def space function name. Function name. Next. Second name. Here I just declare one keyword is global. Global. Space x global space x next third name x equal to fantastic x is a variable this variable having some fantastic string fantastic string 
right? X having the fantastic strength. X holding the fantastic strength. Okay, right. Okay, fine. Once we define the function, then how we are going to call the function? Okay, function we written it. So we need output, right? We need output. So if you just declare the function, if you run the code, right, nothing will be displayed. Means we need to call the function. Once if you return the function, we need to call the function. Then only we can able to see the output. See here my function. Here I'm calling my function. Print Python is plus. I'm adding some addition space x. X means fantastic. Right here I'm printing the x variable. X variable. See. In left side coming to the uh, discussion part, normally when you create a variable inside a function, that variable is a local. Generally, here are use cases. This function, def, def is a function. After the inside function, we have a variable x equal to fantastic. Fantastic. Right? So, a, a my function is a function. That function having one variable. The variable name is x. x having the fantastic. Okay? So, within the uh, this variable which is present in within the function only, right? If you want to call this function, this variable inside the function only, we are going to call it. But out, if I want to access this variable for outside the function, right? It is not possible because this is a local, x is a local variable. x is a local variable. It having inside function. If I want to access this x variable in outside the function, we need to use the global keyword. Global keyword. If I specify the global space x means I can able to access this x variable outside the function. Outside the function. See, right now print python plus x means outside I am going to access the inside the local function. Okay. So that is the purpose of the global keyword. If you use the global keyword, the variable belongs to the global scope. Wherever you want, you can access this this uh, x variable. For example, I have a uh, mm, variable, guys. I have a multiple files. Or else I have a single file. In single file, I have multiple functions. Right? So, there is a there is a first function. There is a variable is available. I want to call that variable. I want to use that variable into another function. Right? So, if you use the global keyword, we can access that uh, uh, local function into throughout the verb file. Okay, that is the purpose of the global keyword. Right. Next, to data types. I will use the time for your questions. Data types. Data types. Every programming language. So, obviously, we have the data types. Obviously, we have the data types. See, here we have text types, text data types, num numeric types, sequence types, mapping types, set types, boolean type, we have binary type, none type. Okay. Text means whatever we are given the text, hi, hello, Stravan, name, something, like fruits. Okay. So all those things which is comes under the text type means, so if you are handling any text, any name, so we need to depends upon the string data type, string data type. Next, numeric types, int, float, complex, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 11, 12, 15, 200, 100, all those is comes in int, right? Float, 20.5, 100, 101.2, something. Complex also, we have numbers, big numbers. Next, sequence types, very, very important. Sequence types, okay? Here we have the list tuple range, okay? Right, especially these are all very, very useful in, in um, as Azure data engineer or data science, we are mainly are going to handle the data in the form of sequence types. Sequence types, list, tuple, range, dictionary, set, fro, uh, frozen set, okay. So list, tuple, range, dictionary, set are very, very important for every day, whatever we are doing, handling the data, right? These are uh, these things which is going to fulfill our need. Sequence types means list, tuple, range, right? We'll see the differences, how we are going to identify it is a list, how we are going to identify it is a tuple. So based on, we have different types of brackets available, guys. Square bracket, parentheses brackets, okay? So based upon the brackets, so we are going to identify, okay, this part which is belongs to list. So this bracket, which is part uh, belongs to tuple, 
like the way we have brackets based on the brackets we can easily identify the types sequence types mapping types list a tuple range list means for example i have a numbers 1 2 3 4 5 up to 10 something 10 uh, something uh, range also 1 2 3 4 also or a comma b c uh, shravan kiran jyoti madan all these uh, uh, names which is we can make it as either list or a tuple okay Right, we'll see the practical. Next range, something range, 1 to 100, 1 to 10, something range. Dictionary, dictionary means the data which, which is stored in the form of key value page, same like a JSON, dictionary. Okay, right. Next, set to frozen set, fine. We'll discuss later the part. Boolean type, we have a Boolean, means true or false. Binary types, no need for these binary types. We are mainly it depends upon the string string integer float list tuple range dictionary set boolean bool bool also okay these are all things which is comes under from the data types in every programming language data type is an important concept okay variables can store data of different types and different types different types can do different things see uh, if i open the variable x equal to 5. 5 is an integer type. Integer is a data type. Right? That data type we are going to store into an x variable. John is a string. Right? This John data type, string data type, I am going to store into y. y variable. Right? Orange. Orange also string. Okay? See? Every uh, see, a string uh, data type. So, we need to specify the double quotes. Double quotes. Right? Okay. Variables can store data of different open. Python has the following data types built in data in this. Okay, we have the, these uh, built in uh, by default data types. So in every programming language, we are going to use these data types.